my friend are you looking to migrate wordpress from one server to another I have lots of friends right now that are needing to migrate from a wordpress site that's that's shutting down at the end of the month which is just a few days from now to a new site and you know you can migrate to any wordpress server of course we're going to talk about migrating on click ecourse but let's just talk about the generalities or the basics of how to migrate from one wordpress server to another and we're going to talk about you know th uh, plugins and themes and and uh, and pages and posts and pop-ups and all these different things licenses the ssl certificates we're going to talk about all that and what you need to do what you need to watch out for what you should be uh, making sure so that you know you can save everything and migrate later you don't you know if something happens whatever you lose at least back up what you got we're going to talk about that too in just a second but first this so the real question is this what are the strategies techniques and tools that you need to learn to generate residual income from the e-learning boom that's happening right now my name is Jean-Serge Gagnon and welcome to Course Income Secrets all right so you have a wordpress blog you have a wordpress site that you need to migrate maybe the site you're on right now is shutting down maybe they're not giving you the right service maybe it's costing you too much you just want to move it from there to another site so what do you got to do to move wordpress what wordpress the cool thing about wordpress is it's actually built on a database it's built on a, 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 a kind of a framework where you can move things around from one server to the next as long as the wordpress versions are compatible which usually they are it's all it's open source you should have no problem at all migrating from one wordpress to another wordpress if you're allowed to back up your data and all this stuff which you know most sites have that so we're going to talk about we're going to show you how that works what you need to watch out for and we're going to show you how to do it we're actually going to do it right here in this video if you listen to the audio you probably should go check out the video you can find that on my youtube channel if you're watching the youtube channel make sure you subscribe if you're seeing this on facebook on linkedin on any other platform there should be a link to the full blog post where you can go check this out and if you're listening to this in podcast apple Podcasts, or if you're listening on alexa don't forget to go check out the actual blog post all right it's going to be j uh, cis209.jsgagnon.com that's going to be the blog post cis209.jsgagnon.com so go check that out all right so now that we've got that let's share, share my screen and kind of show you what you need to do on wordpress to get your blog migrated so i'm just going to open up a new incognito window and let's just share my screen here <clears throat> so we're just gonna I'm just gonna go to a site where we have a wordpress blog set up <coughs> this is Click eCourse, which has a, a platform on there that really doesn't matter where you go I'm just gonna go use one of these accounts I tested I don't oh invalid login that's great <laughs> I should have set up I don't even know what login I have webinar no that's the one I just tried uh test blogger maybe I have a couple accounts I set up and I probably should have deleted them but if I go to the blog this is what it looks like when you go to the back office I'm just going to show you if you have a if you don't have a blog site you can set up a blog site here on on the Click eCourse you just go to clickycourse.com and you go to your account afterwards and then you click on um you click on the blog tab and I've got lots of other uh you know um I've got lots of other blog posts that show that just go to the side of the blog go click on the wordpress and go look at the different blog posts so this is this is the dashboard this is what it looks like when you go to your wordpress site doesn't really matter where your wordpress site is this is kind of what it looked like let me just resize this so you see the whole thing make sure we see the whole thing there we go okay so wordpress kind of looks like that actually I didn't uh, do this right let's just do this go back up here okay so we have the whole thing let's go down here make sure that fits the screen okay so this is what a wordpress dashboard looks like so when you're when you're wanting to migrate from one wordpress to another you need to have access to the dashboard in the old server so you can 
back up your data so you can see what theme you have so you see what plugins you have you see what licenses you have that kind of stuff we're going to kind of talk about these different things right now so first you go to your dashboard right you can see your dashboard here and you if you don't by the way if you don't have access to this dashboard on the current platform you're on there they probably have the ability to send you the information you need so you're going to need to know what theme you're using you're going to need to know what plugins are enabled and activated and you're going to need to know you're need, you're going to need to have your data sent to you so all these things are probably available I don't know maybe depending on the platform you're on maybe they charge you for it but that's not the point we're not going to we're not going to go into the different platforms out there we're just showing you what does it look like in a wordpress platform how does it work how do you get your data so first of all you're going to want to find out what theme you're using so to find out what theme so the theme is what the page looks like so if I go here <clears throat> if I go into my uh, into a blog well you know the theme tells us what the blog looks like you know what's the background colors you can see this like a light beige color and then it kind of shows you also these different blog posts how long they how much of the blog post shows up whether an image shows up whether there's anyway so this is the test blog so there's a bunch of stuff that's all kind of messed up here but the theme determines the look and feel determines what's on the right hand side what's on the top what the menus are where the menus are and that kind of stuff right so that's what a theme is right so a theme is kind of you know the look and feel what things look like how how they're set up and all these things right okay so now we're, we want to find out what theme you're using so you go to your appearance right here in your menu on the side and then you click on themes all right you just click on that uh that that link it'll show you the themes that you actually have installed now the themes that are installed don't matter you don't care about any of these themes that are installed because you're not using them what you care about is the one that's active so this one here says 2020 is active that's the name of the theme and so you got to take note of that write that down someplace the other thing you might want to do is you might want to go to theme details right here and you want to look at what the theme is see in the url oh we don't see that in the url up here we can see that the theme is 2020 it's actually written 2020 it's like two words stuck together that's actually the name of it because the text of the theme right might be different than what the theme name the actual theme is now I don't know if it says anywhere else what the theme is other than the fact that whenever you mouse over any of these things down the bottom here you should see the same thing as the some of these this is a no that's not it yeah so if you click on any of these uh, widgets no see that just takes you to the so the only way to tell what the re, the actual real name of the theme is to actually look in the url bar up top here where it says the name of the theme theme equals something right so that'll tell you the actual name of your theme exactly what the theme is <coughs> the name itself is usually good enough but if you're if when you go to the new site you're trying to find figure it out without with the name here you'll be sure that it's the same theme all right so that's the theme so the thing you got to keep in mind is if you and if you paid for your theme if you actually um, ended up buying a theme or maybe maybe your provider included a theme I know that for me I was using MLSP sites and they included the DV theme D-I-V-I I was using the DV theme <clears throat> which includes a lot of extra extra stuff in it and uh that was free to me but I'm paying you know hundreds of dollars a month on the service and it included that so that was free to me but it was still costing me to have it <coughs> now if I want to use that same theme <coughs> in my new blog I would need to buy that license for that theme for myself because now it's going to be self-hosted or the new provider needs to have it as well included so you can install it or use it I should say not install it but use it <clears throat> the thing you have to remember too is um well the, well actually here's the good news the good news is that you don't actually have to use the same theme that doesn't really matter in terms of your content in terms of your blog you can actually use a different theme 
and it's still fine you can use one of the free themes uh, wordpress has a bunch of different free themes well hundreds of free themes plus some that are paid for and some that have advanced features when you pay for it and that kind of stuff right but the thing that's important to remember is that your data your pages are stored independently of the theme it doesn't really matter what the theme you use you still could use another theme and still be happy with it it's it'll be fine right okay so that's the theme number two is the plugins the plugins so so the plugins are in here you go here just plugins and you will just see the plugins you have you just click on plugins install plugins and see the plugins you have you can say you can the ones you really care about are the ones that are active see in this case I only have one plugin on this test site I didn't do anything <clears throat> if I go to my uh, to my real site uh, if I go to my real site and I log in there you can see on this site what plugins I have here I have more plugins installed here if I go to plugins install plugins you can see I have all these all these plugins if I and they're only you could have a bunch of plugins installed that aren't activated you probably don't care about those I can but you you'll see that it'll say all will have a bigger number than the active you click on active it'll show you just the active ones the ones that aren't active might have been installed by your provider you might have installed them and disabled them you might have not used them maybe ever um, and the thing is that the list of plugins that you have now again it's the same thing you might not need to use the exact same plugin but you want to keep you take note <coughs> mm, sorry about that you want to take note of all the plugins that you have so that you can correlate them on a new server to make sure that you're either using the exact same plugin or a plugin that does the same thing like for example insert headers and footers this is a plugin here that you know it, it just lets me insert headers into my into my page so that it allows me to put in like uh, pixel code from Pinterest and Facebook that kind of stuff right in my pages it doesn't mean I have to use the same plugin as long as I can use a plugin that does the same thing now the and the, and like I like I said for the themes the plugins the same thing you might have plugins that were part of your provider that aren't free that were just included because they paid for that for them for you uh so you you might have to buy those plugins if you want to use them on a separate uh, on a different host but the thing you have to remember too is that lots of this functionality you don't have to have the exact same plugins as long as you have the functionality like pop-ups for example there's like literally hundreds of different hundreds of different pop-up plugins there's hundreds of different header plugins there's hundreds of different you know uh, seo plugins there's there's uh, what's what said lower uh, golden do here a quad layers TikTok feed I mean all these things you might not need them you just have to you you just remember that the plugins are the thing about the plugins is that if you if you want those plugins then you'll need to get them on the new site but just take a list of them get a note of them so you'll see the same thing with these <coughs> uh each of these said each of these has a deactivate on them right so you can no, I'm not saying to click it but if you mouse over it I don't know you can't really see it's really small you're going to see down the bottom it says plugin equals a Weber dash web dash form dash widget right on this one here it says plugin equals conversio bot okay on this one here the plugin says cookie dash law info see that's pretty interesting how this one is completely different you see gdpr cookie consent but the actual plugin name is cookie dash law dash info so you gotta make sure you mouse over each of these to go down the bottom and take note of what it is that it says because see quad layers tiktok feeds actually called wp dash tiktok feed right so those are the names of the plugins now now once you have your list of the plugins that you had on your old site that you're written them down on a piece of paper make sure that you um you go into the settings of these like some of these like for example the gdpr or let's say uh what would seth godin do right there's no there's no configure or anything like that sometimes in the tools or in the settings you'll see these different the the settings of these plugins it depends on the plugin some of them show up in settings some of them show up in tools um like 
uh, yeah so this one doesn't have okay so under settings see even even some of them create a brand new menu entry see like this one seo is yoast seo conversion bot is a conversion bot TikTok feed is the TikTok feed one the, the the quad layers one the under tools under settings I have the insert headers and footers that's the one that's my the the header and footer one and also I think there's the Seth Godin do yeah see wwsgd that's what would Seth Godin do plugin but so the thing is that once you install the plugin on the other side you're going to want to get the settings for these so if you can still access your old blog uh, while you're setting up the new one then I would say don't necessarily worry about it right now but <clears throat> you want to be sure that you have everything you need then you go into each of these uh, tools into each of these settings I go into into settings over here I'm going to go into insert headers and footers I'm going to take I'm going to copy all of this put it someplace copy all of this put it someplace make sure I have that in a, a piece of information that I can then use later on I can go into what would Seth Godin do I, whatever is there whatever is there whatever is here I keep I keep all that and put it someplace so that when I go to the new site I have that information I can duplicate it in the other one because your backup will not include these things in it it will not include these settings same thing with TikTok feed for example if I go to that uh, settings right here it'll it'll show me fonts feeds cache one remove data so this is what I have for this guy this settings here uh, and then under feeds I have one feed that's created this is going to be TikTok feed equals one and I can edit it and it'll show me the settings for it so I got to keep take maybe take screenshots of all this stuff right and save it so you have it for each of your plugins that you're actually using uh let's see what else is there so conversion about same thing it's you know whatever I have here is what I'm going to want to use in my other uh in my other um uh site all right so that's the okay so that's the plugins um and yeah and then after that it's your data what are you going to do with your data you got to get your data from your old server to the new server what is data the, oh maybe before we talk about that we talk about other things other settings and under appearance there's going to be customized right here right so there's widgets menus and then there's background and theme editor you don't need that but under menus you might want to look at what menus you had configured and here you're going to see I in my case I had I had uh where are the menus in your name to remember how the menu yeah so I have three menus select the menu to edit right I have three menus the bottom the main and the second I don't know what I call them whatever they're called it doesn't really matter because then you have locations for your menus this is the menus that your theme can use so if I go to the desktop horizontal menu I'm just going to say the main menu uh, by the way I'll show you what that looks like see right here how it's got all these things on here well I don't want all that so I'm just going to change this and then I'm going to reload this page and you're going to see the menu is now just the the stuff I want there right <clears throat> so that's the menu so you choose where your menus the, the thing is that that's theme based so themes have different sets of menus depending on which theme you choose if I go back here uh themes and I change the theme let's say I change it to this one I can do a live preview by the way that doesn't affect the theme right now it just shows me what it would look like uh see the theme has the same the same menu this one has the same menu right here right so if I go to menus the main menu set to top menu bottom and then I have view all locations the top menu the social links I don't know what that is but and if I can change the main menu to be something else you see how it changes it here right <clears throat> so that's kind of what uh the menus are like that's you can change the menus you got to keep you gotta so when you're migrating right you want to look at what you have under appearance you want to look at widgets menus and I guess I don't know if but that's the theme you have depending on the theme you have <clears throat> but you want to look at the widgets you want to see how your widgets are configured because that doesn't necessarily come over it depends on your um what theme what widget and theme you have that might come in but I'm not you can't be sure got to make sure you have all this so you're going to want to you know copy this right whatever this is right you want to copy it you want to copy this one too 
you want to copy this whatever ones you have you want to make sure that those are you know what they are so you could potentially um have different things in here right so these these so for me I have the footer widget here with these three these three videos right so you just have to keep track of what you got for widgets and what you have for menus if I click on menus here you see that I have like I said I have two menus in this one see this one here has two menus and there's only two menus primary and footer that's because the theme is not oh this is my this is a different theme uh than this one sorry I'm confusing I'm gonna confuse unconfuse you there's I'm looking at there I have two different uh, WordPress sites that I'm looking at here this this is a test site and this one here is my live site so they're both set up differently different themes this one here is using a theme of news up which is called news up this one here is using a theme right now of, of 2020 I can use different themes but the theme affects the menus affects the the widgets so whatever theme you have right now you got to look at what menus you have what widgets you have and on top of the plugins and the theme itself right so once you have all that then you export your data all you got to do is you go to tools and export and in here you're going to choose what to export I would say just just choose all content you don't have to choose different things depending on the themes and on the plugins and everything else that you have you have more or less of this stuff see if I go to my live site and I go to export <clears throat> you see this one has a gdpr cookie consent as well right so a separate thing that wasn't on this one right and if I had if I went to my old original site that I set up like four years ago that I've I've enabled disabled and tried things and did the, I have like 10 things show up there so regardless of what you have there you just download the export file you click on it and it'll create an export file and you'll be able to save it on your computer right so in this case agent search wordpress to whatever right so that's how you export now once you have the export you want to import so if I go to say the new click eCourse site this would be my new click eCourse site right here for example right I want to import I would just click on the import and then I would go to the WordPress over here I would click on run importer and I would choose a file that I backed up and then I would click on the upload file and import and that would import all my data once I have all my data by the way you probably want to set up your plugins first and choose your theme before you import anything because the data that's in your in your backup might contain things that are needed by the themes that are only going to be available by the themes and so so yeah so then you import your data and then you well like I said on your new site let's 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 talk about that let's just go here <clears throat> this is my a user 160 here I'm just going to disable this this blog I'm going to delete it I'm going to recreate it uh because that's just a test blog anyways <clears throat> so I'm just going to delete the blog and show you what it looks like when you first get on here right so when you first get on you're going to get when you go to the blog or you click on the plus here and you go to WP blog right there you're going to come to a page like this it'll say your blog is not activated yet and then they'll ask you to enter the following information so you're going to want to have a site title you're going to want to choose a url you're going to want to choose an admin user which you know defaults admin you're going to want to choose an email address with defaults to whatever your email is you're, you're, going, to want, you're going to want to set a password and the password here is different than the password to access the actual click ecourse platform but in this case I can say test blogger webinars paid blog I can say user let's just set that to test blogger <laughs> right and that can be whatever because it'll be that's going to be the default for accessing the site without your domain okay that's without your domain let's talk about just the first step so I'm going to give it uh, the the password here and I'm just going to activate the blog it takes literally it takes a minute or two to create a, your new blog site with nothing in it a basic site with no data no pages no nothing right <coughs> so say for example I was migrating from an existing WordPress site that was using the news up theme and I wanted to import the data from that old site right so I would go into my here I would export this let's say I export everything from my news up site I'm going to just put that in my downloads or actually put it in my yeah let's just put it right there that doesn't matter 
let's put it right here so Jean Serge WordPress there you go so this is my WordPress site I'm just downloading this right here I'm going to put it right there if I go back to here now oh that's great failed to create it that's weird okay well that's not that's not good I don't like that do you like that I'm sure you don't like it I certainly don't like it that there was an error I'm gonna to have to look into why that happened but once you create your blog you're going to have access to a to your blog it'll be accessible like this just like this and then you're going to be able to go to import right here and you're going to be able to import by just clicking on run importer choose the file right here I'm going to go choose that file where was that I put it here I think let's go by date it's actually on the top there it is right here and then I'm going to upload file and import so if I click on this it first reads the file and saves it to the server which you see down here nine percent ten percent it's taking a bit because my internet is slow and it's a big file so it imports that first it doesn't do anything to it it doesn't do anything with it at all until after it's uploaded to the server then it'll give you an option to do things to do to choose what you want to do with it the default is setting up your uh, is in importing all the data into your database and you can give the the posts and pages an ownership because you're going from one server to the other you want to you want to own all those files right you want to make sure that you own all those files and uh, then what happens is you will be able to import your data that's and that's it so like I said if you set up your theme first make sure you enable all the plugins that you have uh, then you can import the data you should do that first right make sure you like I said choose the word theme and set up the plugins install the plugins that you need if you need to buy them you go and buy them and install them according to their instructions depending on which plugin it is and once it's all in, all it's imported oh look at that exclude them oh exceeds the max file size oh that's nice <laughs> my file is too big so you can split the file up in pieces if it ever is too big um if I go in that's in that's weird that it's too big I guess I must have grown my blogs right <clears throat> so if I go to the export right here I can actually say I just want to export posts and I can select a date I can go from say the very first one to say I don't know let's say December 2019 and then I can export just that for that date and then I can export pages GDPR and media all separate and then I can import them all separate too so that's the other thing if the file that you end up having is too big to import you'll have to re-export it using this these different things you choose these different things depending on the on the so you have to export everything separately you can choose dates here so that you can so that you can export more than one file right <coughs> you can choose the all thing if you want right the all just say all right now whoops you can choose all like this and then just export it and then see if that file is smaller if it's too big then then you'll have to go set up dates right or maybe change categories or something or whatever there's different ways but the idea is you export files and you make sure you don't you have all the pieces so if you were exporting say half your content from the first to I don't know January of this year then you want to do a second export with January to to now and even if they overlap it's okay because when you import and it'll just tell you I already have this I already have this it'll skip the ones it already has it doesn't cause any problems so if you have more than one backup with uh, an overlap in files don't worry about that that's fine too so yeah so that's the process if you go back to my blog <clears throat> let's just actually go to my blog so my blog itself if you go to my blog and you're looking to understand how to do this wordpress stuff there's an awful lot of stuff there's an awful lot of content obviously on my blog what you want to do is you want to go to my blog and then you're going to see on the right hand side there's a categories right there so just scroll down until you find wordpress so just click on the actual wordpress uh, category right there you just click on that and that'll take you to the wordpress blog so all the different blogs how to set up your wordpress blog on click ecourse how to migrate mlsp sites how to set up your blog on wordpress site 
uh how to set up a wordpress site in free in five minutes optimizing wordpress for seo is great why should you host your course on click ecourse how to migrate your blog to your own self-hosted platform right why does that just say own self dash oh self-managed wordpress server I guess the title's too long <coughs> for this this uh so yeah so that's that's how you find the wordpress post just like this one you just go to the to the categories you click on the wordpress category there and it'll show you just the blog post for wordpress just go through them I mean you might be like oh, I'm not really sure if I need to listen to this but you know what just go ahead and look at it read it click on the video watch the video and that'll help even if you don't need it all you're going to learn some things from each video all right hopefully you enjoyed this and this will help and you'll get your wordpress blog migrated and if you have any questions you can always reach out make sure you let me know that you're interested in uh what your question is what your <laughs> obviously if you ask a question you tell me where it is <laughs> so we'll see you in the next episode have yourself a great day this has been Course Income Secrets, the entrepreneur's blueprint to generating income from the e-learning boom. Some of your friends need to hear this message, so don't forget to share. For more content like this, go to CourseIncomeSecrets.com and make sure to subscribe and follow us here. My name is Jean-Serge Gagnon, until next time.